Scott! What a bowling! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently! And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end! Burnley win the next ball. It's Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Yes! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. And he got on the outside, comes inside, comes up a shot. Oh, what a goal! Manuel Benson once more. That is top class. Burnley have done it. Fantastic. Clarets deserve the championship title. They've been the best side throughout the campaign. Burnley have won the second tier. What a fantastic achievement. The players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everyone and welcome along to the latest episode of Turfcast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Redmond, ahead of the visit of Aston Villa to Turf Moor. We're finally back in action after the week off, thanks to Luton's ground not being ready. As you can see, we've got Villa fan Luke from the Up The Villa podcast waiting. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Thanks for having me on. No, you're welcome. Thanks for coming on, mate. It's a pleasure. You may recognise Luke from the overlap. I don't know if I mentioned it, um, but we have been on it before. <laughs> but just before we get started, I just want to say that we're pleased to announce that this season, the Turfcast podcast pre-game show is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Green King Sport venues are showing every single televised Burnley fixture over the 23-24 season. And with more than 900 sports pubs across the UK, it doesn't matter whether you're based in Burnley or Brighton, you can catch every single minute of the action. Keep an eye out during this season for events, offers, content and competitions that put you closer to the action. So Luke, talk to me. Aston Villa, bit of an indifferent start this season, isn't it? It's like, obviously getting spanked. In a you know a polite way of putting it, but by Newcastle on the opening day and then spanking Everton. So how are you feeling at the minute? I'm sure obviously now that the overriding emotion will be we've just spanked Everton. I'm feeling good again, but obviously I'm sure after that Newcastle game you you're a little bit down and probably thinking well you know a lot of us are predicting a good season for Villa as am I, and then you just go and get put to the sword by admittedly a very good Newcastle side. You must have been sort of like thinking ah oh, maybe we're not as good as we thought we were. What's your thoughts yeah. at the minute? Um, more like relief at the minute, I think, because going into that game, like you say, we was all excited, buzzing for the season. We, I oh, predicted Villa to finish sixth, so you know, mm. pretty pretty high. Um, you know, being involved in and around that area. Um, but we had a bad week going into that game. We had Brendier done his ACL in his knee two days before that game. Mm. Started the game okay. We was sort of losing 2-1 and then Mings goes down, does his ACL and he gets stretched off. So from that moment, it, it was just like a terrible, terrible couple of days. Uh, and then we ended up getting absolutely battered. So it wasn't an Unai Emery Villa performance, in my opinion. Like we, we just didn't look like what we were doing so well last season in pre-season. Mm. It was just a disaster. So going into Everton, we were sort of just wanting us to get back to what we were doing last season, like how we were playing, you know, just tactically the shape of the team. And thankfully against Everton, we were able to do exactly what we were doing last season. So looking back now, I think those injuries and not just the injuries and making excuses, but just the emotion of what happened, like two of your best players literally yeah. are virtually out for the season. So I just think that was just terrible for us that Newcastle weekend. So it's good that we recovered and we sort of looked back to our usual selves on the weekend. So it puts us in good stead. I know we've got, um, before we play you guys, we're in the Europa Conference League as well. So we've got our first European game that we can look forward to. And then we've got you guys at the weekend. So we're in a better place now than we were after that first game. 
Yeah, it's, I find it difficult to gauge where you're at at the minute, though, because obviously, yes, you lost to a very good Newcastle side, but then you beat comfortably a very poor Everton side. So I kind of like wanted to see you against sort of like somebody like Palace, you know, see, see how, how you'd do against somebody like that before playing us. Where do you think you're at then now? Do, do you think like the Newcastle games give you a bit of a humbling and you think, oh, maybe we might finish eighth? Or are you now still feeling like, no, we've, we've dispatched of a very poor Everton side. We, we are on for, 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 for finishing somewhere like sixth, seventh. Yeah, I mean, it, if you look at the way the club are operating off the pitch, I mean, we've just got Monchi from Seville, new sporting director. So he's like the, yeah. the transfer guru that was doing all of the success and recruitment for Seville. So off the pitch, we've got him. We've got Unai Emery, which, you know, he is a fantastic manager, you know, how tactically he is, the detail that he goes into, how demanding he is of the players. So I, I think we, we're still on track to be where, you know, we all expected us to be, really. You know, I mean, if you had to ask Emery where he wants to finish, he would probably say a Champions League spot. That's just the the way he is and his mindset. He's, yeah. he's so demanding and he wants the best. And, you know, he, he doesn't just settle for poor performances. And, you know, when he was speaking after the Newcastle one, you know, he, you could tell he was like so bothered by it. So I, I think we probably where we need to be. I mean, obviously the, the injuries are a bit of a blow. So we've uh, signed Zaniolo from Galatasaray and we're looking like we're going to be strengthening in the window still. So I think after the window shuts, we're probably going to be where we need to be, I think. Yep, yeah, fair enough. Just looking at some of your transfers then as well. How do you rate the transfer activity so far by Villa? You say you think you're going to still strengthen. If Mings and Buendia were fit, I'd say yeah. very, very good. You know, I mean, it, it, for Villa, it was all about getting to that next phase of having like two very good players in every position. So mm. uh, with Pau Torres coming in, another centre half, ball playing centre back, like um, he spoke about on our channel, you know, that's how we play. We play out from the back. So we brought Pau Torres in, who's so good on the ball. Moussa Diabu spent about 40 million on, on a winger. That was an area last season where, we just lacked that pace, that cutting edge, that aggression, speed up top. So, you know, he's been a great player, looked really good. He's already got one goal. Tielemans, like you say, good player, central midfield on a free. Uh, Zaniolo, we've got him on the on the right on loan. We're looking like we're going to be letting Luca Dean go. So, uh, Acuna from Seville, he's potentially going to be coming in. And I just think some more attackers. So, yeah, the window has been good. It's you know it's, it, they're good players that we've been signing, so I think that's always a good sign when they're, you can see that they're a decent player before they even get to your club. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it, for me, it's all been about getting Emery's players in now. Last season, his success was based on making what he'd got already and coaching them and making them better, which he did. I mean, you know, there's parts of last season where we were like in the form table, we were like second and third and you know and that was going on pretty much since November so now he's been able to get the players in that he wants to play to suit his system we, sh we should be we should be even better than last year to be fair so yeah I think it's been a, a good window but hopefully there's like you guys there's there's more to come from the window yeah and you but you touched on it briefly obviously you're in the Europa Conference League is it this season yeah. um playing Hibs I think on Thursday um actually it's Wednesday. is it Wednesday yeah, oh, that, yeah. that's that's better for you isn't it really yeah, I was hoping yeah, maybe I, I mean it's, it's only Hibs so I, I say only yeah. Hibs I don't mean it but it's only a drive up or you know a, a 45 minute flight so it's not like you're playing someone in you know Afghanistan which would have been better for us um so I, I don't think that's going to have too much of an effect on you for this game but my question is, like over the course of the season, obviously you're thinking or your aims are you're going to be better this season in the league than last season. But do you not think that the Conference League will hinder you? Because, poor example, but when we were in the Europa League, admittedly we only played three, well, six games in it because we actually failed to actually physically qualify for the actual group stages. Um, we were knackered like playing Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, and that were only for like six weeks. And it took us all the way till Christmas to to actually come out of that. Yes, our squad was a lot smaller. We didn't have anywhere near the sort of funding that you do. But a lot of teams have struggled with it, aren't they? How, how do you think you're going to cope with it? Yeah, I think it's a, a fair point. To, I mean, you look at West Ham last season as well. They were mm. absolutely terrible in the league. Mm. 
what, what I would try and counteract was was like when I was talking earlier about the window and and making sure we've got two players in every position and the, the squad depth is there and that when one player is out, then it's not like you've sort of got the replacement that's worse. So if Luis is out, we've got Tielemans, etc. So the fact that we've got Emery as well, and I think he's won the Europa League four times. He's played in the Champions League. He's used to having sides playing that European competition. So, yeah, if, if I was being brutal, I would say I'd look at it as a bit of an excuse if, if that's what did happen. You know, I mean, the way Villa are now, we, we, we're trying to we're trying to get back to being that European club that we used to be. And I think playing in Europe, you know, you, we've got to just qualify for Europe again, to be fair. So I, I think I'd like to say we should be all right, to be fair. You mentioned a couple of times tactics and Emery's tactics. How do you play? Talk to me how you play under Unai Emery. It, var it varies depending on the opposition. So he's not afraid to do something completely random that you've never seen before. So we went into a game against Newcastle and he, he put McGinn on Dan Burn, and he's got these little quirky tweaks that he does. But generally we're a 4 4 2. So we're a 4 4 2 uh, with a box midfield. Uh, we like to play it from the back, uh, our left back or our right back, whichever tactic we depend to go with, will be more advanced. So then we'll make up sort of like a three at the back and that full back will go into midfield and act as a winger. So whether if, it, if we do decide to go heavy down the left or heavy down the right, then, then that's the vibe that we're doing. Um, we just look to control the game. So control possession, have as much of the ball as possible. Um and we've started to get John McGinn breaking through the lines a little bit more. We've got pace out wide in Bailey and Diaby. So we, we're just trying to suffocate and control the whole of the game, whole of the tempo. Um, and yeah, that's generally what we're trying to do. We'll defend and press in a 4-4-2. Um, and then we'll play with this box midfield. We might have to defend a bit of a low block. So then we'll go into a sort of like a 5-3-2. Um, or sometimes we'll go to like a six at the back and our uh, midfielders will tuck in. So we generally play about three different formations per game, whether we're with the ball, without the ball or defending. So, um, yeah, it adapts on the opposition as well and, and, and how he sees fit, really. Yeah, when I look at this Villa side now, I see a lot of danger, man. Like, you've got a lot of good players. Obviously, there's the players um, that were doing well last season. Then you brought in, like you say, Torres. Obviously, like I said, last season, you've got Watkins, Louise. McGinn's a very good footballer as well. Obviously, you got a goal against uh, Everton, the first one, I think, at the weekend. But who is your, at the minute, like, standout danger, man? Like, who do we need to be looking out for on um, Sunday? I'd probably say the manager. And that sounds really <laughs> weird. It's a bit. It's a bit like what you were saying though earlier, in the sense of it, how how we play. If we're playing really well, everybody's playing really well, and and you're watching us, and you, it, it, I guess, it's a bit like mate, you might be watching Everton, and they just couldn't get the ball, and we were second yeah. and first to everything, and everything looked so fluid, and it was free flowing. So. If that's happening, then that makes Luis play really well in central midfield, DRB, Bailey. So I, I think how we play is probably the biggest threat. I, I've been saying it for, for some time now that, you know, in the Premier League, it used to be about like the players would just win the games and it would be random players would do a piece of brilliance. But what you're seeing now is like systems and tactics coming into it more and more. You look at Deserby at Brighton. I mean, their yeah. football is like mesmerising. So there's not there's not one player for Brighton that's sort of like the go-to player. You know, you've got Mitoma and CISO, that they're all playing really well. So I'd say a well-coached team now in the Premier League, it, 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 it could be anyone. But if I had to say players, I'd probably say like Diaby, Watkins, you know, Pacey, stretches uh, the defence, um, McGinn breaking through. Um, and yeah, I'd probably say those, those, those few players. Yeah, fair enough. That DRB does look class, doesn't it? Um, I've not seen too much of him just yet, but from uh, you know other games and, and previous games in his career, he looks a, a very, very good footballer. Um, I do want to ask you, like, what's changed at Villa? Because it wasn't this long ago, you know, you're back in the Championship. Mm -hmm. I remember I, yeah. I used to be a journalist back in, you know, back in a previous life. I, you know, I went to Villa Park 
Um, I saw you beat Leeds 3-0. I think that might have been the season you went up or, or the season before. I can't remember. Um, but it, it were all a bit doom and gloom when you first got relegated, wasn't it? And eventually, obviously, you've come back at, at, and now you are back at, and you're back with a bang, doing very well in, in the Premier League. What's changed from, from falling out the Prem and to all this doom and gloom to now being back and then just knocking on the door of, of well, you're in European football, but I mean, like even the prestigious European competitions? I'd say, first of all, it'd be our owners. Um, it's not been plain sailing for Villa in the Premier League since coming back. Uh, when we got relegated, um, we got bought out by new owners and Dino took us up pretty much straight yeah. away. Um, so if, from the owners coming in, the trajectory has been pretty, pretty like upward, really. Um, mm. So that was good. We, we survived on deadline on the last game of the season when we first got promoted and you know that great escape sort of when it was coming out of lockdown I think it gets overlooked because about 34 games we were like four points from safety with like four to go so we survived and then the next season um we did pretty well and then Dino got the sack and then we had Gerard and that was a disaster um <laughs> we survived somehow um, and then Unai Emery came in and, and now we've started to like transform the whole club on the way we do things like with Monchi mm. coming in, we're, we're knocking down the North stand and, you know, the owners, when they came in five years ago, wanted European football. Five years later, we're now playing in Europe. You know, it's not the conference, you know, the Europa League or Champions League, but, you know, it's some form of European football. So it, it's, it has been quite difficult, but, Having went since Emery's come in, I think this has probably been the best years for me to support Villa. You know, I'm 34 and I've seen O'Neill and 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 just do well in, in even in Europe, but yeah, this feels a bit different because I think when a fan base like you guys with your new owners, like when you get that sort of feel good factor. You have to just keep it going. You have to keep on that. You have to keep surfing that wave, don't you? Because you've got to just embrace everything. And that's what we're doing. So with Emery coming in and, you know, we were virtually in the relegation zone when he came in and he, he got us into Europe since November to the end of the season. So to do that and beat the teams that we were last season, like we did the double over Spurs, we beat Chelsea, we beat United, playing really good football. We've just been on that sort of wave, really. So it's just been good. But I'd probably say ever since Emery's come in, I've watched football in a different way because, yeah. you know, you look at teams like Man City on how they play and you're like, God, I wish we played a bit like this. And when you see Villa trying to, you know, play out from the back and move defenders into midfield, you kind of appreciate football a bit more probably like you guys you know you've yeah you you had Deutsch ball and I, it probably did serve you quite well but when you start watching a better form of football you start to realize that watching it is actually quite good even when it's your own team so I think we're, we're a bit similar really in the sense of your own yeah, manager and so yeah yeah, we are. I was going to say we are a bit similar, but if we can achieve fifty percent of obviously what you guys have done, then then that'd be fantastic. I think the trouble for is for us is keeping older company. Um, whereas I can't see, you know, because obviously Villa are a massive club, European champions in the in the past. Um, I can't see, you know, too many clubs being big enough um, to 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 porch Emery away from you that that would want him. Because I think I think the Arsenal thing might hold him back from some of the biggest clubs, mm -hmm. especially in this country. Um, but maybe abroad, some big clubs might want him. But I think I think the thing for us is um, holding on to company. But you mentioned there, obviously, a little bit similar situations and stuff. You mentioned that we used to have dice ball. I know, I know we mentioned it a little bit more on your show, which we did just before this. What are your thoughts on Berlin and how they've transformed and how they've turned into this like new, not new, well, new club in a way, but uh, mm -hmm. the, the style of play and everything that Berlin are trying to do compared to what they used to do? I really like it. I mean, I... I'm big on football, like tactics and style of play, and I love watching, you know, the movement of teams and and how teams move the ball and operate and players off mm. the ball. So when I'm watching Burnley, I, I can really appreciate, you know, the the job that he's done. So um, I think, as if you'd have asked me that when Deutsch was there, you know, again it served you well, but 
it, it's horrible to play against and it like dice ball mm. route one balls it, it's absolutely h- horrific to watch as an opposition uh fan as well because you know what's coming but you can't do nothing about it because yeah. you're just so good at doing it it's like when Delap used to throw them balls in for stoke yeah you know it's coming but you can't you can't do nothing so um i, I think to see you know a young manager like company as well you know sort of like learn his trade and elect and, and, and to come in and do it in the championship. And do you know what? The biggest compliment would be if you can play good football in the championship, you know, you know you're a good team because that league yeah. is so competitive. It's so difficult to get any type of consistency. So, you know, you've got to take your hats off to it. I, I'm, I'd, like I say, I'll be very interested to see how company can adapt to the Premier League because like I've, I mentioned about our journey into the Premier League to get to this stage where we are now I mean it's been difficult it, to, mm. to even finish 11th in the Premier League is very very difficult um, mm. so I, I'd be interested to see whether the style can can translate into um, how you continue and want to keep playing because I imagine that there, there may be some times this season where it does get a little bit tough and it's whether he like sticks with his core principles, which uh, I think he will. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how, how he does in that sense, really. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that because obviously when we were on the overlap, I will get that in pretty much in every show up <laughs> until about Christmas. Um, <laughs> Jamie Carragher predicted his three to go down and he said Luton, Chef United and Wolves. Then we played yeah. City. Um and then Wolves played well at Man United that week. And then he said, you know what, change my mind. I think Burnley will go, go down because of the way that they, they play. Because I think company will stick to his, his principle. And he will, he'll stick to him. Like, don't get me wrong, we'll take some beatings this season because mm-hmm. of it. But I think we'll also dish out some beatings as well. And I think, like I said earlier, that this or on your show, I can't remember. Uh, there's some dross in this league. And I think there's easily five or six teams that Burnley can finish above. Um, so I, I, I think because of that and because of the how good we will play and we'll shock some teams. Because I, th- I think, again, I think, some teams are just going to... Go on. Yeah, I, I think you'll be better than the bottom. That's where yeah. I think you're... That's where I think you're... I, I, if I had to say where I think you're going to finish, I'd say 15th to 12th. That's where I'd yeah. personally say you'll be. I think, yeah. like, you know, you'll be, you'll be better than that core group at the bottom. And I don't think you'll be massively involved in a relegation battle. So... That, that's where I think you'll be. Yeah, no, I agree. I think I said 11th to 14th. So if we finish 12th, 13th, then we're both right. Everybody's happy. But <laughs> yeah, there's teams down at the bottom that I think we're just so much better than. That includes Everton at the minute. I know it, I know it were you who spanked him and, you, and you're clearly a good side with some good players. Uh, and we'll see where we're at in relation to Everton uh, on Sunday, obviously, when we play you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think we'll easily be more than comfortable. Um Predictions then? Obviously, I'd like to end the show on predictions. Um, what sort of game do you think it's going to be and, and what, what result are you expecting on Sunday? Uh, this is where you cut me off. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> what type of game? Um, I think it'll be quite tight to start with. I think last season we were very good away from home. We got so many wins away from home. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it was mad watching that. So I think it'll be competitive. I would just say, and it depends how you look at this. Some people might say, well, we haven't played, so we're going to be fresh, etc." I yeah. think the fact that you haven't played and we've played three games, we I think we'd be bang up to speed. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I'd back Villa to win. But, yeah, it's it's not, I'd, I'd say 2-1 Villa maybe, but that's obviously because I'm a Villa fan. So, yeah, um, no. yeah I, I, I think it'll be... A difficult game, and and you know, like I said, uh, you, you're still adapting to the Premier League, which there probably will be that little bit of bedding in phase of getting up to speed with it, really. So, um, yeah, it'll be tight. Yeah, no, I, I kind of agree, um, but I'm sort of like going to lean more on the fence of a draw. Um, just, just because I've not, I'm not got used to predicting defeats yet. Obviously, I had two for the City game, um, but obviously, I don't know. I just, I'm hoping 
that because we have had two friendlies and I know it's not the same, um, but I'm hoping it's given company time to look at his squad a bit more and understand that you know these players need to be whatever because obviously we've brought a lot of new players in. So I'm hoping that you know it, it gives the new signings time to adapt to the system because that was something that we struggled with last season. It took a lot of the, well, all the players because it were a new system completely under a new manager. It took a lot of them time to adapt to his way of, of playing and his way of thinking because there's a lot of fluidity in our formation. It's not just a you know a four three three or whatever. Um, there's a lot a lot of fluidity in it. It's different when you're on the ball and, and without the ball, as I'm sure you are as well. So it takes a new signings time to get used to it. So I'm hoping these two friendlies, one of which hasn't been played yet, I think it's today. Um, and more time with the manager has given players to uh, chance to adapt to it. So I, I'm, well, I, you know, it's going to be a tough game. Villa are a very good side. I did say when when the fixtures were announced that you know we had Villa, City, and Spurs in the first you know three games after the Luton game was called off. I could have easily been leaving that with zero points. Um, but I'm I'm going to go two two because I think you're very good. You're very good at going forward. Um, I think hopefully we shock you with the press because I felt, <laughs> felt like City were a little bit shocked at that. Um, but yeah, I do think you have players good enough to deal with it. Um, but we'll see. But I, I'm hoping, you know, it's probably hope more than expectation because Villa are a very good side. But I, I take a draw now and an entertaining one at that because I think it's going to be two decent sides. Villa admittedly with the better players, but two attacking sides going at each other. So I'm looking forward to a good game. I think it's going to be a good game. Yeah, I think it will be too. You could have done with playing that Luton game. I think. Yeah, that, I agree. That, yeah. That would have been, that's a good. That's a good one for you. That's the three thinking. points, hopefully. That's because yeah. then after these three games, and you're on three points because you played four, yeah. and one of them's Luton. You're like, oh, it's not too bad. But if, if we're after these three games on zero points, bottom of the league, that's what worries me. Because the year we went down, we started off slowly and we never caught up, and then the pressure mounts on you. Then players start making mistakes, like James Tarkovsky and Ben Mee, and, and even poor people making uncharacteristic mistakes because the pressure was on them. So that's the only thing that worries me. But I think ultimately we do have the quality to come out of it. But yeah, I agree. We could have done with playing that game. Yeah. So hopefully it's a, a good game. Yeah, I think it will be. I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, just before we do wrap it up, do you want to let everyone know where they can find you and your podcast and YouTube channel on, on all the social media channels? Yeah, so we're just UTV podcast on, on YouTube. So we've got Joe on the show anyway. So that ours will be out on um, Saturday. I think that episode's going to go out. So you can check him out on our show. And uh, yeah, it's you're a great channel. Uh, love it, to be fair. And you're quite... You, it's nice to talk to like knowledgeable football fans. You know what I mean? Because content creators <laughs> sometimes can be a bit like I don't know. It's a bit so, so a bit shouty. There, so yeah, yeah, they do yeah, it. They so... do it just. They do it just for the clout. Some of them, and I won't mention yeah. any names. But I think people could know <laughs> who, who we're on about. But there's some out there that just want to shout and scream for the sake of it. Say ridiculous things just to get yeah. heard and seen. But no, I agree. That was a good thing about the overlap as well. That I won't mention it anymore in this show. But it's just <laughs> meeting like-minded people, isn't it? Who who create good content and who know what they're talking about. But yeah, I agree. It's a pleasure, mate. Good to meet you the other week, uh, and great to have you on the show. Good luck for the season. But of course, after Sunday, nearly said Saturday then. But I, I, th- I agree, Villa will be fine. And if anything, you could win the Conference League. I know West Ham won it last year. Look at the teams that are in it compared to Villa. You should be winning it. So enjoy it, mate. Like I, I went to, uh, like I said, our European tour wasn't anywhere near as good as what yours will potentially be. But I went to Aberdeen when we played Aberdeen, and I went to Olympiacos, and it was so good that the, the, we, we we give Aberdeen so much shit. But when we first got the announcement, and it was like Burnley will play, we're like, hey, so Aberdeen, like, no, what European <laughs> tour? And I'm going to drive up. But honestly, it, it was so good. The Aberdeen, the Scottish lads were a great laugh, and it was brilliant. So just to enjoy it, mate, because, yeah, yeah, who knows? I think Villa will get better, if I'm honest, but who knows? I, I've not experienced that again. And Burnley, Burnley fans might never experience it again, but good luck for the season, mate, and enjoy it, because I think you're going to do well. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers for having me on.